So right before we came on the air, you were telling me you have a couple offers on one of your properties that you're working through. Congratulations on that. Uh, should we talk to our viewers just a couple of seconds about what happens when uh, one of the ways that we deal with highest and best offers? Yeah, well, or multiple offers. Yes. Right. Um, there are a bunch of different ways to deal with them. And, um, and, and sometimes I advise my clients when you get multiple offers to deal with them one at a time because multiple offers sometimes freaks out buyers. So if you tell them you have multiple offers, sometimes people will go away. And you don't want that. That's not your, your seller's interest. Um, but we've got two offers that are pretty close but not exactly what we want. So we might just go to highest and best um, and give them a little time and see if other offers come in. So just for those of you who haven't been through this before, let's say that you put an offer in and somebody else puts an offer in and they tell you to come back with your highest and best. That's when you and your agent sit down and talk about how high are you willing to go and a penny more you're willing to lose the property. It's tough. To go through that because you're bidding against yourself you don't know what the offer other offer is and you don't want to overpay so it's as you as kyle just said it's a very emotional time but uh it's one of the many ways probably the most common way that we deal with multiple offers when we're representing the seller but go ahead. to kyle's point sometimes if you come in with a really good offer off the bat they'll just choose to work with you yeah and so, so let's talk about some of the tools that we use when we represent buyers. Um, one of the tools that I use in a multiple offer situation is an escalator clause where I say that we will go X amount, 2,000, 3,000, depends on the size of property, 5,000, 10,000 for a, a more expensive property above the next best pro the, the higher price. So we keep going above mm -hmm. and then we cap it out at some point some number that makes sense. Exactly right. Uh, my buyers, Tom and Sheridan last fall were in a multiple offer situation. There were three offers at the same time. And we put in the escalation clause and we said we would pay a thousand dollars over the highest bid up to, I forget what the number was. But so when you put that cap on, it doesn't mean you have to pay the cap. It just means that you will not pay more than that. And that happened in our case where we didn't have to pay the cap. We just paid a thousand over. Um, and then of course the appraisal is in there. Um, your, the property would have to appraise out in order for you to get your loan. So that's protection as well. But uh, you're right. Escalation clause is the best way to win in a tight market, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Funny. We should be talking about that. So uh, if it's all right with you, Kyle, I am going to share my screen and we're going to talk about, where are the markets at right now? Okay. So new listings. Boy, did we predict this one. January listings are coming back with a vengeance. Properties under contract are coming back. And check this out. In the loop, I mean, it may not look like it's huge up, but it's 24% of January last year. And don't forget, we had a very strong January, February of 2020. But that's the point. Look at those numbers compared to last year, um, which tells me these are these numbers that that uptick is a March uptick in a normal year. Yeah. Brand yeah. It started in January. Um, the market has begun with a vengeance. Yes. Which is why we, we, we're talking about the things we're talking about today. This is great information. Isn't this good? I'll tell you what, today is February 1. I was at the crack of dawn to get these numbers for you, mm -hmm. my people. Okay, so 30 days, 2,869 new listings came on and 1,397 went under contract. So about half the number went under contract of those on the market. And of course, as Kyle always reminds us, many of these were canceled and relists. So beware. Now, I, just, I haven't put this slide in before. I just wanted to show it to you quickly. This is condominiums attached and single families detached together. This is the price spread of homes in our marketplace. 
and the number that went under contract in various price points. And you'll see that the majority of homes that went under contract are between the 300 and 700 price range. Not a surprise. Well, not only no surprise, but also <coughs> as I'm looking at it, um, the under six, under 550, if you, you know where that drop is? That is about, that looks to me like 65, 70% of the, the number of homes, of total homes. If you if you do, I mean, it's bearing out what we've been saying, the people who are who are sustaining this market or the properties that are going fast is mm -hmm. ones that are um, first time buyers. Lower price point, yep. Lower price point. Very nice point, yeah, very good. And because we're out of the gate so strong, we're still at a small supply of homes for sale. So, I mean, it's even tighter than it was three months ago. West Town of these four neighborhoods has the highest supply at only 2.5. Uh, North Center, 1.8. Irving Park, 1.6. Logan Square, 2.0. They're just flying. But then I wanted to show you, you know, these are the four closer to our office and where we do a lot of our work. Uh, the Loop, 12.5 still. Near North. 11.3. Now these came down from 14 and 12, but you know, they're still a little bit high. Lincoln Park has come up a bit. And I think that's because more properties have come on the market, but still four and 3.5 are very, very strong seller markets. So and this is just for example, we went on the market back on the market with one of my properties mm -hmm. on Saturday unexpectedly, but we went back on the market and we had seven showings in within 24 hours seven right hours. you yeah it went crazy the market's just like and if you look at top agent network which we're both members of oh my goodness looking for looking for looking for looking for so again people if you're thinking of selling now is the time now it doesn't mean you have to ask crazy prices because it's not showing up the the demand is not showing up in um, in price, huge price increases. What it's saying is if you price your property correctly, you will get um, showings and you will get offers. Right, exactly right. So you have prepared uh, something for us today. Kyle, you wanna get into that? So what we decided to do, because this is such, a, um, such an incredibly fast market that we, I mean, we were already in spring. As I keep saying, it's, it's unbelievable. We th I thought we'd talk about what is, hold on, I'm doing a share screen. Um, what's going on um, and what are brokers talking about? What's, what, can you see it? I sure can. So this is, these are um, national issues. And I thought, and, and um, I thought we would talk about what's happening in Chicago. One of the things that we've talked about on this show a bunch is that Chicago is different. We are not the same as the rest of the nation. Right. Um, and I think actually that the, there are many more changes for the nation than, you know, there's no place that sort of, there are no national trends for gosh sakes anymore. So these are six issues, um, inventory shortages, vaccines, uh, the impact of vaccines, foreclo uh, foreclosures coming, uh, the impact of interest rates on demand, um, is there going to be a shift to uh, to remote work, and what does that mean for real estate? And some of the um, upcoming fixes to affordability challenges. So, issue one, and Anne, what do you think? Will low inventory continue throughout this year, or or sellers going to come on the market in Chicago? I think low inventory is going to continue throughout the year. Just how low, I don't know, but. Uh, we what we need are enough first time buyers to m help the move up market so that we can, you know, people aren't going to put their properties on the market unless they have somewhere to go. Well, this seems to be a trend across the country because 84% these, these, uh, these numbers, this came from a survey by a firm that does um, referrals between brokers. So they're very interested in what brokers think about everything. And 84% of brokers surveyed said that they expect um, inventory uh, to be low, too low, uh, lower than they wanted to in 2021. And in 
you know, the, uh, some of the information. By the end of November of last year, inventory was down 22% um, year over year. Now, this is a huge issue in some of the uh, places where people are moving from to, so from Illinois to the South Atlantic area. It's a huge issue for them that inventory is so low. You know, well, you, what you're saying is the people that are moving from the upper Midwest to Florida, uh, where they're wanting to work remotely and get more fresh air, there aren't enough homes on the market for that blitz of people going south. Carolinas, Georgia, there's just not enough yeah. property on the market. Now we're a little bit more relaxed, um, but as you're seeing, this this, this uh, was done in this survey was done at the end of last year. I think Chicago agents are going to get much less relaxed as we're starting to see in the top agent network about yeah. the inventory levels. Absolutely. But, uh, right. Uh, but right now we're a little bit a little bit more relaxed. So then the. Another question was, um, will wide vaccine um, availability boost consumer confidence? And it yeah, of course. It, aren't we already seeing it? Uh, I think it is boosting consumer confidence. I, you know, I felt like our market never really shut down once we got it running again in June. Do you think? Um, well, I think we slowed down at the end, uh, it's sort of in the early fall and then took off like a rocket again. I think no. things slowed in August and September and then shot up again. I'm hoping that the greater security of buyers means that we'll have even more people in buying and sellers who are ready to move up will be more confident. So, so I'm hoping it'll happen. What this survey said is 50% of brokers thought with broad vaccine rollout, um, inventory would rise. People would feel much more confident about selling and buying um, and willing to let people into their homes, et cetera. Um, okay. But also, you know, what, what, one of the things that um, the news has reported is with uh, over this course of the pandemic, people have been saving a lot more. And saving <laughs> means that they're going to feel much better about putting money down. So they'll have some money. A good point. Um, and job security means that there'll be more buyers. Um, anyway, so uh, there are a, a lot of the brokers thought it would be better for buyers later in the year because inventories would rise. Right now, because inventories are so low, it's much better for sellers. Okay. Um, issue three. Are, are you at all worried about um, foreclosures? Right now, we've got a period of of forbearance, which means the banks aren't foreclosing right now when people can't pay their on their mortgages. Are you worried about foreclosures in the Chicago area? I think we're going to see them. I don't think it's going to be a huge problem. Uh, one of the things that I was looking at is um, people have a lot more equity these days than they did say in 2005, six, seven. So I, we're going to see some, but I don't think it's going to be broad broad scale problem. You know, that's what people are saying. It's it, it, that um, if people have to sell because they have to sell um, for financial re um, reversals, they have enough in, they have enough equity that they don't have to do it in a foreclosure situation. Right. right. And they can put it on the market. Mm -hmm. So um, this is not a, uh, a recession that's driven by real estate. So people are quite confident that that's, the gas right. will go, there'll be some more foreclosures, but not, not nothing like 2008. Right. Um, do you think uh, low mortgage rates are going to continue to drive demand? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Well, um, they're also saying that at the end of the year, um, uh, end of 2021, rates may be as high as 3.3%. That is still so low. That is still so low. But you know what? Here, and I don't remember let me look through okay it was mentioned kind of in your slide six but i'm going to say this now right now is our best affordability people and in fact we we may be a little bit not as affordable as we were even in a month or two ago because here's the deal what impacts affordability interest rates and home values nar Others are predicting home values are going to rise. And, you know, those of us who took basic economics know 
that when there's so much demand and so little inventory, we're going to see prices rise. And with interest rates, you can afford to have prices rising. So here's my point. If you don't get in the market quick, you're going to see these prices rise. And NAR is saying that they could rise as much as 5% nationally this year, which is a big number. Well, even bigger than that in some cases. But if you see the prices go up, and you see the interest rates tick up a little, even if it goes from 2.7. Diane, one of my lenders said that she was quoting somebody 2.5 on an interest rate for 30 year fixed this week, oh 2.5. And that's with good credit, but not like perfect credit on a conventional rate. That's insane. So even if they go up to 3.3, which is an historic low, if you've got 5% or more appreciation because of this push to buy, it's not going to be as affordable as it is today. So chop, chop, people. Let's go. Time to and, buy. But you also talked about one thing. And another thing that, um, I, and I've got a blog on my website, blog, blog post on my website about this. There's a, uh, the Biden administration has proposed a uh, tax credit for first time home buyers yeah. up to $15,000 towards their um, down payment that is applied at the moment that it's paid. So that is just, huge it's going to spur more and again that'll affect pricing oh, it's gosh. going to be fantastic it will be well yeah 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 I think, I think it's an artificial increase i don't know that i'm in favor of that necessarily but more i would help our market sure sure help the market so issue five do you think the uh, shift to remote work is going to spur more moves or not yeah Absolutely. And not necessarily just out of Chicago, but changing what a cool floor plan is. Everybody wants an extra bedroom or two for offices or and we're always already seeing it, aren't we, Kyle, with these new floor plans where they're having little workspaces that are right off the public areas. Um, it's going to it, it's going to shift how we live. It's going to shift how we live. And it, to your point about the floor plans, I'm starting to see people. Um, calling closets home office yeah. <laughs> if it's a big office and yeah yeah. Oh, yeah there you go all right so that's those are and um those are just some of the ideas the things that we brokers are starting to talk about and plan for the the main gist of all of this is it is a great stop sharing a great year to buy and sell yeah well even in chicago Absolutely. I'm going to share just a couple quick slides. I'm not going to take too much of your time, but I want to show you this is what I was talking about earlier. So the first thing is year over year equity gains and what's happened to home prices across the country. Look at California, $34,000 year over year. And it's not just the uh, warm weather. Look at Alaska, 11,000 year over year. 14,000 in Florida and Chicago's 6,000. So pretty good. Okay. Home price forecasts. I was bobbling the numbers earlier. NAR says we're going to go up 6% this year and they're not alone. Realtor.com 5.7, Freddie Mac 2.6. So even if you take the lowest, we're going to go up 2% in home values. Unemployment projections, they're projecting unemployment's going to decline. And here's the slide that I think is so fascinating. Cashing out, we talked about this earlier. In 2005, the average refi was taken 2638 out, 718 in 2017. 2007, 2408, 2019, 898. So people aren't taking that much money out. So uh, those are um, the billion dollars that the financial industry was pumping in to people's pockets during this time at, at with um, you know consumer demand they they wanted to buy stuff and so they were using their homes as banks right Look exactly. at now, now people are not doing that they're they are respecting the equity in their home and wanting to maintain equity in their home it's just incredible it's it's you know almost a third of that of the earlier number it's on so that's why we're so confident that we're not going to have the foreclosure foreclosure crisis that we had back in the last recession absolutely right now i thought this last slide in the bottom right is 
fascinating. Um, 59, per, well, almost 60% of all homes have 60% equity. How about that? You know, Illinois has historically trailed in that number compared, this is nationally, has right. trailed in that number. But even now, we're, because there's been um, so little turnover of homes um, in Illinois in comparison to other markets, that my guess is we're, we're going to do much better. We, we don't have the updated numbers, though. Right. So well, I have a little top shop. Time to buy. Time to buy, but time to sell. So I have um, also just for fun, because you know what? One of the things I talk to all of my sellers about, what sells fast and why. We study it. Anne and I study what is, and and you're not going to be surprised by this, people. It's it's pricing correctly, um, sells fast. Um, so I have for you, um, a property that I saw that went under contract in 14 days. Hold on, I'm trying to find, share a screen. Share a screen. Um, application window, there we go, share. Um, can you see it? Okay. What sells fast and why? What sells fast and why? But I'm only showing you one property because I don't want to hit you, I don't want to be boring. Um, so <laughs> it's it's my, what I like to call real estate porn. Um, this is This is what, I look at when I look at um, the MLS. This is what sold this. I did this last night, but what sold over the last seven days in Lincoln Park in under thirty days? So it's thirty days on market. I think of as a fast sale, and these are the properties. And you'll see that, which is sort of tough, is that it tends to be the properties that are you know a little bit lower priced now. Lincoln Park does not have a lot of lower price properties. If this were the Gold Coast, it would almost be almost 100% Sandburg. Um, Sandburg's um, Village has a lot of very reasonably priced condos. But um, I'm going to show you uh, 2503 North Green uh, View. We don't know the sale price yet because it's only went under contract, but it's priced at $2.75 million, which when you see the pictures, you're going to think, wow, that's really well priced. Oopsie, I've now made it bigger, going back, that's it. So this is this house, it's on a corner lot. Um, it was on the market for just two weeks. It was new in 2015 and the and the owner paid 2.425 for it. It's got $40,000 in taxes, a three car garage and a rooftop hot tub. Now, well, there you go. That's I, worth a million right there. Okay, how great is that? <laughs> That is pretty. I like the light. The light. Yeah, it's very so bright. Anne and I would have said to this seller, you're thinking, if you're ever thinking about selling, get pro get um pictures in the summertime. This will all be filled in with leafiness. It wouldn't you wouldn't be sitting in a um totally open space. And you can see that there right. are um blinds built in. So, you know, it's not like you're in a fishbowl. But look at how cool some of this design is. This is the kitchen. The kitchen vanishes. It's such a pretty kitchen and dining area. Uh, this is the master bedroom. Oh, so pretty. You don't see that it, it goes back into, um, there's a bed back there, but that was not as pretty of a shot. So I'm only showing you the pretty. Hi, this is the master. This is the <laughs> So pretty. Is that a fireplace to the left there? Yes. yes. And I think that fireplace goes into the, I think on the other side of that. The bedroom, is, yeah. The primary bedroom. Mm -hmm. I this whole thing is a wine fridge. Oh, nice the wine wall. Wine wall. Thing, yeah, and t and Lovely. fireplace and jumbo TV. This is the downstairs. So nice. Very sleek. Look at that. Oh yeah. So that's actually um, a staged image. But then again, oh, wow. so. Well priced, beautifully um, or beautiful pictures that have it cleared out, depersonalized, looks beautiful, and then floor plans. This thing sold in two weeks. My guess is they had a ton of showings. That's lovely. Okay, stop share. Love it, love it. So, you know what? It. I'm always tickled when we. Um, what I want to say when uh, our predictions come true. And we've been saying 
we've been saying the market's tight. Now's the time to buy and uh, it's coming true. Yeah. It's a great time to be both a buyer and a seller. The buyers have such great interest rates, so yeah. many great, uh, you know, possibilities. The only challenge for them is inventory. And for sellers, the only challenge is getting yourself organized in a pandemic sucks. <laughs> but it's a great time to be a seller because there are buyers finally out there. Right. That's the, exactly right. The only thing you have to do is price it right. Right. So, yeah, the only th other thing I would say is if you're thinking of selling and not sure where to begin or what your price is going to be or how the process works, please reach out to us and let us help you. Because if you're thinking about it, this is a good time to be thinking about it. Even if you're not going to go on the market for a few months, let's talk about it now. Let's get you set up so that the process becomes easier. And information helps you make decisions. If, you, if you're just thinking about it, having the correct information means you'll think about it right rather than have preconceived notions. Exactly right. So I'm Ann Rossley. I'm here with Kyle Harvey. This is our Monday morning coffee with Kyle and Ann. And we were talking about what's going to happen in 2021. Thank you so much for watching. Watch us every week, Monday morning at 730, or you can see the rebroadcasts on our Facebook page. Also, you can find our past subscriptions on our, what do you call them? Our past shows on yeah. YouTube. So thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next week. Take care.